The first time I ever took this PSAT practice test, I got this question wrong. And the reason is that I trusted Desmos when I should have trusted algebra. So lesson learned, I'm gonna do the algebra method here. And it's not so bad. This is a, something that if you recognize the vocabulary here uh, is very easy to think about. We're talking about the number of solutions now, we, we've seen a question like this already in this module that had to do with the lines, okay? And when we had lines, we were able to think about slopes and y-intercepts. These are clearly not lines, right? So we're going to need a different method. This is actually a case where we have quadratics. We have an x squared. Now, it doesn't look like it, but if I square both sides of this thing to get rid of the radical, which I definitely don't want, I'm going to have a squared. And that's kind of where this, this thing comes from. So let's do that first. Let's clean this up. We got to make sure we FOIL correctly, all that stuff. So we're going to get k minus x is equal to, so this is uh, 58 minus x times 58 minus x. So that's 58 squared is 3364. And then that's minus 58x minus 58x plus x squared. So let's just combine these first before we start doing too many moves here. So 3, 3, 6, 4, 58 plus 58 is 116 plus x squared. And now I'm going to add this over. I'm going to add this over and I subtract this, subtract this. And so some annoying things happen. First, we have zero. I'm also going to move my x squared to the front because that's kind of how I want to write a quadratic is the x squared first. So negative 116 plus x is negative 115x. And then here, uh, it's annoying, but we can't combine those, right? They're two different things. So 3, 3, 6, 4 minus k. We're going to leave it as k. But let's be clear. k is a number. I don't know what that number is yet, but it's a number. And so I'm going to need that because the next step is to think about when I have x squares and we're dealing with the number of solutions, we're going to use this idea of the discriminant the discriminant. This is part of the quadratic formula that we use to understand the number of solutions for quadratics without actually finding the solutions themselves. So that's what I'm going to do here. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, that's okay. Many of you are in 10th or 11th grade, the beginning of 11th grade. You have not learned this yet. You literally have not done this in school. Hopefully by the time you take the SAT in like March or so, you will be able to talk more intelligently about this. But I do have a lesson on it. Just go to the where it says no x squared, or sorry, where it says number of solutions, x squared. That's going to be on my channel, and it'll talk more about this. But for now, what I want to do <clears throat> is I want to plug into b squared minus 4ac, and specifically because they tell us we have one real solution, this is going to be equal to zero. That's just how this piece of the quadratic formula works, and we get our a, b, and c from the, um, uh, the normal quadratic form, uh, standard form that we have here. So the A is going to be 1. So uh, let's give a little space here. Well, let's get B first. That's negative 115 squared minus 4. A is 1, right, because that's what's in front of the X squared. Now, this is where the annoying part is. The C term is actually this whole thing, 3, 3, 6, 4 minus K. Because if the K were a number, which it is, it's just we don't know it yet, then we would combine it with a 3, 3, 6, 4 to get what we call the C term, the part of a quadratic equation that does not have any X's attached. So you're, some of you are looking at that K and like, but it looks like an X, right? It's a letter. No, it's just a letter for now. The X will always be a letter. That K will not be a letter eventually once we solve for it. Um, so let's take a look again. We, we can start to, to solve things here. So we have 115. So 115 squared is, oh boy, 1, 3, 2, 2, 5, minus. Now we're going to get rid of the 1 because it doesn't matter, but let's distribute. So that's minus 3, 3, 6, 4 times 4 is 1, 3, 4, 5, 6 uh, plus 4K, which now it starts to make sense why they wanted 4K, right? That That's not a coincidence. So now we just combine these numbers. So 1, 3, 2, 2, 5 minus 1, 3, 4, 5, 6 is negative 2, 31 plus 4K is equal to 0. So let's add that 231 over, 231, and we get 4K is equal to 231. And that is the answer. So you're done. Now, the reason I got this wrong originally, uh, not to get too deep into it, but one thing we can do with Desmos is we can just put stuff in there and see what happens. Um, so uh, when I put this in, um, radical k, well, let's just do a k, yeah, k 
uh, minus x and then equals 58. Oops, see, Desmos on the iPad, always, I'm just missing buttons, 58 minus x. So it doesn't know what to do with that. You can see the little error thing. But if I just tell it, just make k a number, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be OK. So if I made k1, uh, nothing happens, right? I don't see anything. So when it's asking for the minimum value of 4k, that means there's also a minimum value of k. So I just need to maybe play with this until I get something. Now, if I make it 100, I get something. I get a number here. And if I shrink it, you can see that number is moving. So the point is, I'd be looking, all right, I want one real solution. I want to see where that disappears, right? So that, that, that vertical line is my solution. And if I go to 57, it's gone. But if I go to 58, it's there. So what I originally thought was it's probably 57 because, well, I don't know. There it is. It's, it's gone. And if I go to 58, it's there. So what would be 58 times 4? Because that's what they wanted. That's 232. 232. Now, it's close to the right answer, but it's not enough. And that's why I got it wrong as I put 232. Now, what we could do here, and I don't really understand what's happening, but what 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 we basically need to do is instead of putting all of this stuff on one line, we have to split it up. So we have to do um, k minus x, and we have to do 58 minus x on two separate lines. Let me kill off this purple one. And we can see we get two things. And now as I adjust the k, look at how the blue one moves, and it, it's going to hit that green one. So now we're looking for where they intersect just once. If I zoom in, you can see they intersect twice at 58, right? So 4 times k is 232, right? So that's the answer I put. But notice when we look at it, you've got two intersections. But if I go to 57, I get no intersections. But if I do 231 divided by 231 divided by 4, I get 57.75. So if I put that in, there it is. Perfect. They just touch the once. And that's it. And look at 4K, 231. Again, I don't really understand why that's happening. It has something to do with the radical that's, that's messing with this in some way. And then Desmos doesn't really handle radicals very well because of something it's doing on the back end. It doesn't really matter. I wouldn't worry about it. Um, if you didn't understand all what I was talking about, that's also totally fine. This is just kind of for some people who maybe also made the same mistake that I did, why it doesn't work. But what always will work is using this discriminant formula. And um, what's good about this is it's very robotic. Uh, I know it looks like a lot of algebra and it seems very difficult. And for many people, this is a good example of a question. Just pick a number and move on with your life. Don't worry about it too much. But um, if you are trying to solve something that's hard, if you've got the time, it's very repetitive. We need to know what the discriminant is. We need to know to kind of square this thing because radicals are messy and we don't want to deal with them. So we square it and then we have to use that discriminant. We have to know that it's equal to zero when we want one real solution. And then from there, it is kind of just like going through the motions. And so this looks bad, but I wasn't really thinking very hard as I was doing this because it, it, algebra itself is not so uh, taxing on my brain. It's mostly just the setup that's annoying. Um, and so some people are just not going to have any chance at this because they just don't know what the topic is and they don't know how to set it up. Again, that's okay. There's other things on this PSAT, uh, including in this hard module, where calculators, strategy, all that stuff helps much more. When you get to the last seven or so questions, start making choices. Work on the things that you understand. Work on them thoroughly. Try to force your way through them. And if that means leaving a couple of questions as a sacrifice to the SAT gods, that is fine. Pick a number, pick a letter, move on, and you don't need to answer everything correct. We just want to maximize the correct answers we have. So this is a good one to just leave aside.